you're in London and you're watching Metal Money. Aye. Cool, guys, greeting from Metawani. Thanks for being with us again. Cool, no problem. Um, so I've been on a tour for the last 10 days, with London tonight being the last show. So how has been the response across the UK? Like that. Amazing, awesome. brilliant, really We're good. We're always surprised. We always like think when we're going out, oh, it's going to be rubbish, no one's going to come and see us. And it's always a pleasant surprise. Always. It's all right. Last night especially, very hot, small room, sold out. And it was a wicked show. It was. It should be hopefully like that tonight. With a bit hopefully, of luck. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good times. How many songs did you guys play from the new album Lost Ritual? Uh, four. Four. Yeah, four. We were, we're playing four, four, four or five. Well, four I know we were playing four, five. five yeah. And we kind of mixed it around a little bit in the set and stuff. But yeah. At least four new songs. Mm -hmm. I think it's no point going out touring again playing all the old stuff, is it? Now we've got the new album. Indeed, yeah. You know what I mean? But so, the same, yeah. at the same time, there has to be a, a, a mix of the bangers in there. For, we well, need to play lots of people on the list and all of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is the fifth studio album and the first since the reunion. Also the first fan funded with the help of the Plage Music. Um, so all that combined means that Reading Speedon have a lot to prove and live up to to yourself and to the fan as well. So could you tell us about a bit more about the process and the experience behind the, the Pledge? You know, oh, as the, the first one as uh, well. well you know. but, but basically the idea is that. Um, Instead of having to deal with record companies and distributors and all that nonsense, a band can pretty much fund it themselves through Pledge. Pledge pretty much are a record company, but instead of there being any ties and them telling you what you've got to do, you just raise your own funds and then use those funds to record for the fans. So it's pretty much like pre-order, you know the old days of pre-order, you pre-order an album, you pre-order a t-shirt, once the money's in you then order the product, give it to the, the fan, it's the same thing, but what it allows you to do is to have special one-off things just for fans who, like who've helped you, so you're really giving something back, but also it, it, as a band it gives you the opportunity to, to really feel um, the fans help, uh, part of it, I guess, which, yeah. is, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it has been incredible, absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah it's been brilliant. We're blown away by the response. Yeah, yeah really. really. I mean, I always think it's crazy when people like uh, sign to small labels nowadays because yeah, you know, why? If you've got a fan base, it's like you sign to a small label, mm -hmm. they spend all your money recording your album, and then give you, you nothing know, back. And tell you what to do. <laughs> and then from the fans' <laughs> perspective as well, yeah, you know, they have to wait like another six months for the album while they work out their release cycle. Then they put it in the record shop for 15 quid or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's shit for the fan as well as it is for us, really. So it's best best of both worlds for everybody, which yeah. is what we're all about. I mean, it's it's about a party with the fans. It's it's, yeah. it's not fans. It's people who we party with. And family. Literally, that's what it is. Family. Getting the middleman, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck the labels. <laughs> Apart from anyone who does want to. <laughs> so fun are obviously loving the new album. I feel like the band songs writing are rich and durable, incorporating more influences than the other albums. You guys still have your, your roots, you know, uh, like the song like Bring Out Your Dead. Uh, this juggernaut is just unstoppable and just hits me like a pleasant ton of break really. <laughs> then you go down the road with uh, Motorhead, an old school rock and roll tune with a sludgy edge that you guys do so well. Um, so, could you tell us a bit more about the lyrics inspiration on uh, of the album? Okay, well, no. basically, we got together, um, we started jamming tunes, we wrote a couple of tunes, not because we were thinking of writing a new album, just because we wanted to jam something new. Well, it was and halfway then, first, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. To hell first, um, yeah. But pretty much most of the writing, because that's how we've worked before, spont spontaneity, yeah. basically, on, on, you know, when you go in the studio with it, kind of almost done but not polished so that you're building it in the studio so we wrote pretty much eight of the songs before we even well the weekend before we went into the studio um, but without lyrics so it's everyone involved the whole band writing the songs getting them something near and then when we got in the studio basically John and Frank mainly Frank um, as we were recording hung around and we're just heading stuff in and writing without us really involved they in, kind of in had any the, of that. the melodies and stuff of bits where it yeah you know, where, where it'd be on on each song and stuff yeah. but the lyrics kind of came but we, we always seem to work better like 
just sort of doing it, like saying, doing it spontaneously. spontaneously yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't agonise over it too much. We literally just do what feels right and what comes out. Like we write all in a room together, yeah. most of the time, apart from like the odd riffs that we write at home. But the main bulk of the songs are done with us just in a room, mm-hmm. just freshening it out, really. And, and I think that ties in nicely because I've always, personally, I've always seen Speed on as a live band. So. The recording has to reflect that, and to reflect it, it has to be spontaneous in the studio. We can't go in with polished songs we've played for months and months and months, and then work on them even more because it would be—it wouldn't be speed on. Speed on is about good times. Um, good yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it has to be spontaneous. Yeah, the only thing we really added was like a little bit of studio polish at the end. But I mean, the skeletons of the songs were done like in about a week, yeah, really. Yeah. You know, so. So I can I ask you like a song, one of my favorite one, which is uh, Evil Elemental. I think, I think really, it's that, it's that, it's that um, I think there's lots of narratives you can pull into the, the lyric, and they're all narratives that I'm sure everyone already knows. There's no sort of cleverness behind it. It's that mm. thing of partying hard and, and having fun, and is that an evil thing, or is it that you're mental? Sometimes, like when we're out, and some of the things we get up to, you maybe think, Am I actually? No, sometimes you do. You wake up in the morning. Am I fucking? Am I mental? Or every morning? Or I, guess evil, or? I guess from a other's perspective to ours as well. It's like because we're quite like hard party and, and uh, we. I think we can come across quite badly to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where really we are quite easy going. Yeah, yeah. When you meet us, we just come with blokes at the end of the day. But when we're Larry, it can come across as as being a bit of a pain. If you see what I mean. But really, we're the nicest guys. You just gotta know how to take this. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Just all. <laughs> yeah. Big pinch. Uh-huh. This fault. Yeah, exactly. We never take ourselves too seriously. No, 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 no. Never. Which never. is where the problem comes if people do take us seriously. Yeah. They kind of miss the point. Mm-hmm. Puff, Dave. <laughs> you know. I'm very serious. Very serious. Very serious. Down the line. <laughs> so coming to the production, uh, you've been working with Russ Russell. Yeah. The production is thick, deep, heavy, and impressively crisp as well. Uh, I feel like the arrangement are sweeping down. Oh, yeah, nothing is played for the sake of playing, really. That's kind of the feeling of it. Yeah. So I don't know if you agree with that first. Yeah, no, no. I think totally. so. It's like it's really great, like working with Russ. And um, we did actually do quite a lot of like different guitar tracks and stuff. But the point of having Russ there is like he can do the trimming for us. Like, not, the way I like to do things in the studio is if you get an idea, record it. Get it down anyway. You never know if it's going to be good or not until you experiment and try it out. But then, like you say, if it's going to be speed on, it can't have millions of layers of guitars and mm. bells and string sections and stuff. You're know? saying that we did go, we did go that little bit. Yeah, but not. But again, it just. But it's more. It. It's more. Su- anything that's like that on the record is more subtle in the background. Yeah, if you yeah. see what I mean. Which is which is where I think working with Russ worked because Russ really does know. Well, I mean, he knows the band anyway, so he, he, he knows bands, he, he learns bands, and he understands what they're about. So a lot of the cutting that goes on would happen during mix. So you might not even know what he's going to do, but you guarantee what you get back is like, yeah, that's perfect. That's it. For me personally... We wouldn't have thought of that, yeah. but you did because of the listener. You did. When I've done previous albums, I've really, like, agonised over it, and I've been there for the whole recording process and been like, I want to make sure <laughs> it's just how I envision it. But this time, because we've got Russ on board, I could sort of like sit back and just trust him. Yeah, yeah. And I just like, I'll do my parts. I'll let everyone do everybody else's parts and just trust him to sort out all the, sort all the all shit. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. And, yeah, and he's, a, he's an old friend of ours, so there's no like... He's the nicest out. guy he's ever And there was some beers yeah. too, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> also, John and Frank voice uh, Mathieu since 2005 or The Great Have Fallen. Now some of the song you have some strained vocals that sometimes are no more than just whispers. So uh, how different was the approach, or was there any difference actually? On a, you just, know, or it's always what, been the same. It was just what yeah. happens, as we say, as yeah, always yeah. before. Yeah. It was just on the spur of the moment, and, and also working with Ross, I think helped that because Ross is like open to anything. So he might, it, it, someone might be thinking, oh maybe we could, but he, they wouldn't do it. And Russ would be like, why don't you try doing this? Yeah, just try yeah. it. And, and it's that happens. thing again of just try it anyway. It's there if we want to use it. And it just works. Yeah. From a band point of view as well, I think we're obviously like more mature musicians. So yeah. maybe the early stuff, it was pretty much all we were capable of. But now, of course, we can do so much more. Not that we should, <laughs> but we can if we want. But it's worth, you know, 
pushing though. You don't want it just to sound like the first record. No. You know, because everyone was like young kids back then, and now we're in our 30s. And if mm-hmm. we haven't got better by since then, you know, then right. we're seriously trouble. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. So tonight is the last uh, tour of the day. So anything planned after that, guys? No. Yes. Uh, we've See actually, my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> apart from that, in the in the long term, we've actually got an island drawn. We're going over to Ireland uh, in a couple of months, aren't we? Yeah, we're doing a London tattoo convention as well. Um, HRH, yeah. uh, Stone yeah. vs. Doom Festival in Sheffield. Sheffield. Yeah. And then some other stuff in the pipeline that we can't really say now. Because nothing's been confirmed. So. And then obviously <laughs> looking towards festivals next year. Yeah. Hopefully Europe. Yes. Did. Which we really need to do. Yeah. Mm. Good dance. So. <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you, man. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Cheers, man.